Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the eTrailer Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2018 Chevy Equinox. It looks pretty good considering this is a hidden cross tube so really all that's going to be hanging down is the actual receiver tube opening by itself so it gives it a little bit more of an OEM look than some of the other hitches that hang down. Another thing that's really nice is the matte black powder coat finish here. Not only does it look good, but it's also gonna keep it from rust and corrosion long term. This is a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, so that's gonna be great for a lot of different accessories, whether it be your bike racks, cargo carriers, or even a ball mount for a small trailer. And you'll also have a 5 8 hitch pin hole here, and that way you can actually keep your uh, accessories loaded up and in place here. Now, the hitch does not come with the hitch pin and clip, but we actually have plenty of options available here at eTrail, including the locking ones. And a lot of times when you pick up your accessories, they'll come with a hitch pin and clip as well. You're also gonna see a rolled safety chain loop here, and that's gonna allow us to be able to get our chains in place when towing our trailer. So even large clevis style like that, or just a standard hook, it's gonna be nice and easy to get into place. Now let's go ahead and get some quick measurements here. So from the center of our hitch pin hole to the farthest part of our rear fascia, we're looking at about five inches. And that's important to note as some of your accessories will have folding features and you wanna make sure it's not gonna make contact with the rear fascia of the vehicle. Something else that's important to note is gonna be our ground clearance. And from the bottom of the receiver tube opening to the ground is right at about eight inches. So it's relatively low. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues with this making contact, but when you load your accessories, some of them can actually hang down a little bit or extend out. So when you go up a hill, these can actually drag on the ground. So keep that in mind when you do have your accessories loaded up. The installation is not too terribly hard on this hitch. And a lot of times that's what scares people off. Well. There's going to be a little bit of cutting involved to enlarge some holes, but it's pretty minor. You will have to drop your exhaust down to kind of get it into place, but overall it's not too bad of an install, and I'm going to walk you through every step. So let's actually take a look at that now. To begin our installation, we're going to be taking a T15 Torx bit, and there's going to be two screws here attaching the rear bumper to the actual support brackets. So go ahead, take those down. Now, as we pull hardware off, I highly suggest keeping these in a nice organized spot. That way you'll have them for reinstallation. Something that I do to keep it all organized is I just got a cheap muffin tin and I've put some magnets underneath it. So I have all my new hardware and also spots for my uh, existing hardware. And that way they can stay organized and I'll have them in each spot. So in order to get the hitch in place, we're gonna to need to drop our muffler down. And on the rear, the exhaust isolators on this vehicle actually have a bracket here and the bolt needs to come out. The bolt head is over here, but removing those Torx bits allows us to kind of flex our rear fascia a little bit, gaining us access to those bolts. Now these are gonna be a 15 millimeter and we're gonna go ahead and remove two on this side, two on the other side as well. Now with both isolator brackets taken down, we're also gonna to need to get this center uh, isolator as well to really drop it down. Now, once you take this out, it's gonna cause the muffler to drop a little bit. So I suggest supporting this. I'm gonna be using a cam buckle strap, but if you're doing this at home in your garage or on your driveway, putting a block or something there to support it, it's just gonna keep any damage from occurring when it kind of drops down. Now removing this rubber isolator sometimes can get tricky as it kind of gets a little bit of buildup in here and sometimes the rubber doesn't want to move well. So I recommend using a little bit of penetrating oil and just kind of spraying this down. And that's gonna kind of help lube it up as it wants to, uh, as we pop it off, it's gonna make it a lot easier. So going back with a pry bar here, I'm gonna actually use this as leverage to kind of push this off. It should come off fairly easily, but you may have to work at it for a little. Kind of just pushing on the edge there. And you can actually kind of move the muffler a little bit too to get a little bit more leverage if you need to. But with a little patience, we should be able to pop this off. Now it really doesn't matter which one you remove. You can do the top or the bottom, whichever one's gonna be easier for you. And with that off, you can see our muffler actually does drop down. So I'm gonna actually use my camera strap to kind of lower this. It's gonna gain us a little bit more access when putting our hitch in. 
Now the way that the hitch attaches to this vehicle is using carriage bolt and a fish wire technique. We'll be putting them in these slots here and that's so we can actually thread it up and put a nut on there. But in order to feed this in there, we actually have to enlarge this hole to allow this to fit. You can see that the hole is just slightly smaller. So using either a rotary tool to kind of cut this a little bit wider just to make a slot or even a burr bit, you, kind of whatever works best for you, just enlarge it and just double check each time once you make some cuts just to see if this will fit in there. Um, and once we have those holes enlarged on both sides, we'll be able to actually get these fed up. Even if you have a hand file, that's also gonna work. I just kind of used my rotary tool to kind of cut these notches. And you can see that's gonna be just enough for us to get this in place. So once you have that slotted on both sides, allowing these to fit. So now we're gonna need to get our carriage bolts in the three holes on each side. And in order to do that, we're gonna start on the furthest one and we're gonna be using the fish wire technique. So included in the kit is gonna be this coiled wire. And we're gonna start on the furthest one. It might also help to make a bend right before that coiled end and that can kind of drop that in a little bit, keep it, keeping it low. So go ahead, take that coiled end. And then what we're gonna do is take our spacer block here. And we're gonna just feed this up and it should fit through that slot as it's the same width as the carriage bolt head. And then we're gonna just put this bolt on the coiled portion, just thread that on there. And then we can actually feed this in. You may need to kind of go at an angle here, which is fine, um, but just make sure that that goes up. And then as we pull this on the other end of our wire, you may have to kind of wiggle it a little bit and then it's going to pop through there. Now it's important, you wanna keep your fish wires on here as it's gonna make it a lot easier when we put the hitch up in place and it makes sure that this doesn't go back in the frame rail. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on these two as well as the three on the other side of the vehicle. Now before you raise your hitch up, you're gonna to want to actually take your exhaust hanger bracket that we uh, loosened up earlier and there's gonna be a metal tab that slides into it um, the instructions don't state that, but you're going to need to actually drop this down and that's going to gain you access to be able to kind of move this, allowing that hitch to actually feed up here. Something else that's going to make this a lot easier is kind of pulling on this fascia here. If you can get your muffler to kind of poke down past your fascia, um, and that way when we feed the hitch in, we can actually go above this and that way we can get it in place. So go ahead and do that on both sides. You may need to loosen up your support just to gain a little bit more of that access. So now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna get our hitch in place. So I suggest having your at least one nut ready. Um, and what we'll need to do is kind of just feed this up over the muffler. And then once we're rested here, we're gonna take our fish wires and feed these through the holes. So with the corresponding holes here, so we'll put our front one in. And if you need to, once you kind of pull that through, you can actually make a bend here so it kind of keeps it in place for you. Now the middle one, there's two holes here. We're gonna go with that larger uh, oblong one there. Get our rear one in. This is gonna kind of help guide these in and make sure they actually go. So I'll grab all three wires now and then we'll just slide this up into place. Make sure all your studs are in there. Now while holding the hitch up, I'm actually putting pressure on the bolt here and I'm gonna take off my fish wire. Now it's important not to let this go back in the frame as it's gonna be troublesome to get that back out. So you're gonna to wanna to just get a few threads here on the bolt. And if you need to, you can use like a flathead screwdriver or just something to kind of hold that there while tightening this so it doesn't push up. Or as you can see here, I'm just being extremely gentle just to kind of get those first couple threads started. So go ahead and get one started on the other side and that way the hitch is at least supported. It's gonna make it a lot easier for the rest of these. Now we'll just repeat this with the rest of our bolts here and uh, we're gonna put our flange nuts up and we don't have to tighten these down too terribly tight yet. Uh, we're gonna be going back with the torque wrench. So just kind of get them all in place and then you can snug, snug them up with the socket, uh, but we will, you don't have to get too crazy on them. So with your 19 millimeter socket, go ahead and get these tightened down a little bit. 
Now with all of our nuts tightened down, we're gonna go back with our torque wrench here and torque them to the specifications in the instruction manual. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually sell these here at E-Trailer. Generally, you can rent them in an auto parts store. And this is gonna be important because it's gonna make sure that it's not too tight, putting stress on the threads, but also it's not gonna be loose over time. So now we're gonna get our exhaust back in place and part of that is gonna be putting our bracket in. And you can see there's actually a slot here. That's where that little welded on tab is. So we just make sure that this is slotted through there and that's gonna hold in place and we can get our bolts back in and the rest of our isolators in place. To make this a little bit easier, you might wanna push up on the muffler and that's gonna kinda help align this up a little bit better for you. Over on the passenger side, the bracket's gonna be a little bit different as the slot is right there. So again, same thing, just kind of feed this up. Now, don't forget your rear isolator as well. Get that back in place. Now you can take your strap or your supporting uh, block that you might've had, get that out of the way. And now we can take our T15 screws, get these back in place, and that should do it for the hitch installation. And that was a look and installation of the E-Trailer Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2018 Chevy Equinox. Thanks for watching.